Hey guys, on today's episode, we're working on this 1978 Mercedes 450 SLC. Now I found this and the 535i BMW on the Upper East Side in a garage. This thing has been sitting for over two decades and we came in, we rescued it, we brought it back here. We're gonna clean it, detail it, and then flip it for a profit. Today on this episode of Drive and Protect. I want to give a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. More on this coming up. The SL line has been associated with Mercedes' greatest sports cars and championship racing teams since the mid-1950s. None bigger than the revered 300 SL Gullwing, the holy grail of Mercedes collectors. The 450 SLC is the coupe version of the SL Roadster with a slightly longer wheelbase to accommodate the two rear seats. It has a fuel-injected 4.5-liter single overhead cam V8 with nearly 200 horsepower. This is a super comfy, air-conditioned, leather-trimmed cruiser, and starting in 1978, Mercedes offered a wood grain center console. Super cool, and it's in great condition and in this car, so there's no way it could sit another day in a dusty parking garage. Time to find her a new home. After pushing it on the elevator and nearly losing my hand in the process, we got her up on the flatbed along with the 535i. Thanks. Both were purchased for $5,000. Now, I donated the BMW to a great guy and a former Marine on last week's episode, so be sure to subscribe to watch all of our detailed rescues. But for the Mercedes, I need to recoup my investment and keep the shop running, so we're going to flip this for a profit. Once back at the studio, you can see this hasn't been washed in many years. It's covered in black dust or sort of like soot, which is likely exhaust fumes from being stored in a New York City garage. There's no vents or windows, that kind of thing. So step one is to power wash, soap her down, and then see what's under the layers of grime. Okay, on to today's sponsor, Squarespace, which gives you a powerful and beautiful online platform on which to create your very own website. Here's how it works. Now, one of my favorite things about Squarespace is that you can actually create a community within the website itself with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and even likes. <clears throat> they also have powerful blogging tools to help you categorize, share, and even schedule posts. When you're trying to get an old cart running, and share it with the world. Hmm. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all in one easy to use platform. 
You can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These are third-party tools that can help manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, and reconcile and even file sales tax while shipping items across the globe. You can even display social media posts like this one here to your website and vice versa from your website to your social media so your followers can share it too. Be sure to go to squarespace.com to receive your free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, use promo code squarespace.com slash ammo NYC for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. With that, let's get back to the episode. With the paint now clean and dry, step two is rejuvenating the interior carpets, the plastics center console, and removing the white mold on the seats. With my buddy Renan in for some extra help, we removed everything from the inside, including the floor mats and the carpets underneath, which revealed rocks that were probably buried there forever. Wow, that is a lot of dirt. Because the floor carpets come out completely from the car, I didn't need to remove the front seats to clean underneath there. Instead, I spent the time to pull out the back bench seat because one, it's very easy to do, and two, what? it's usually home to critters that need to be, so let's say, relocated before I go and sell the car. There it goes. Same thing on the seat back as well. Super easy nice. to get off and very easy to clean. For the plastics, I'm using Ammo Lather Interior Cleaner, an interior brush, and steam to kill the mold before wiping with a microfiber towel. Keep in mind, when I'm using the steam machine to super clean the leather or to remove mold, I like to add mousse conditioner in the now clean pores after the job, but I'll do that once everything is done a little bit later. For the vents, I'm using a mini woolly covered in lather to get into all the tight areas. Now, this is the same material and construction as the big wheel woolly we're all familiar with that we've used on rims forever, etc. But this is just shrunk down for super tight spots. You can use it on the engine, the caliper, and of course, interior vents. Next are the carpets, and these things are pretty gross, but the diffuser mixed with shag carpet cleaner and the reservoir made a significant difference on just the first pass alone. Afterwards, I hit it with a little bit of steam to sort of open up the fibers, then finish with the steam vac extractor. The before and after here was huge. This made a very large difference in I think the value of the car before and the value of the car afterwards. Check out the junk we pulled from the carpets. Pretty gross, but it's better to be here than in the car. 
On one of the carpets that was really dirty, sort of extra dirty, I had to use the drill brush and Titan 12 degreaser to lift the stains, which I think were more uh, oil-based stains that I couldn't get up with the initial step. So when you need to use a little bit more power, the drill brush can be helpful. With the rest of the seats now cleaned and reinstalled in the car, we applied mousse conditioner to the very thirsty leather and sunburned plastics. For the outside, the paint was not only swirled, but had calcium stains that usually look yellowish or orangey. Again, very common from New York City parking garages. They all seem to drip from the ceiling and leave these marks. So we definitely had our work cut out for us. I first tested the paint with a wool cutting pad while Renan worked on removing the masking tape stuck to the paint for years. Normally, masking tape, it's an easy fix. You pull it off, it's not a big deal. But because the adhesives went through the heat and cooling cycles of summer and winter in the garage for many, many years, it sort of became ingrained in the clear coat and was very difficult to remove without damaging the clear coat in the process. To do this one properly and not do any damage, you had to use a plastic razor blade, a little bit of solvent, and tons of patience. All right, guys, I'm behind the camera now. I just did a test spot, and you can see the difference from left to right, I did it right over here. You can see there's a much, it's much brighter, much lighter than this side. Now this is a lot of just sort of dirt embedded in the paint and as I'm polishing, it's just coming out where we couldn't get it out with the wash. But you can see a distinctive line right there. That is the before and after. And of course on silver, it's much harder uh, to show a huge difference than on black, let's say. But if you zoom in real quick here, you can still see all the swirls. And again, it's Mercedes paint, so you're gonna have to throw a little bit more at it because it's a little bit harder. So in this case, I'm using a blue wool cutting pad with blue uh, compound, it's a little bit harder. And you can see here, perfect circle. You come over here, now you have the scratches and the swirls and love marks and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna repeat the process on the rest of the car. And this thing's gonna look dripping wet like this side when we're done. Pretty stoked. With the paint now restored, I added Ammo Reflex Pro Finishing Wax to increase the color and the depth, have a wetter look, and of course, add some protection to the paint before it goes up for sale. With the paint looking a thousand times better, I focused on the wheels that had cement splatter, especially on the driver's side front rim face. We need to remove this. So the best way to get cement off of paint, and in this case wheels, is I'm using a mixture of vinegar, pure white vinegar, 50-50. You can play with that ratio, and you're gonna let it soak. Now this happens to be in an alcohol bottle. I'm just using this because it was empty, but I put 50% vinegar, 50% water. You're gonna let it sit there. The acidity within the vinegar is gonna loosen up a lot of the cement. And you can go in, and you're gonna have to polish afterwards and use a plastic razor blade 
or your finger, oh, there it goes. You can see it's starting to come off already. And it'll pop right off. Otherwise, it's just a nightmare if you don't use um, vinegar. But they do make specific cement removers, but it's basically the same thing as just doing the mix on your own, the 50-50. There it goes, look, it's popping off right now. So I gotta clean this. Uh, I have one or two tires, uh, wheels that have this, and then we're good to go. For the really stubborn cement, one trick is to soak paper towels in your vinegar water solution and let it soak on the area for about 10 to 15 minutes. In my case, while I was waiting for the 10 or 15 minutes, I cleaned up the aftermarket exhaust with my polishing fluid and a microfiber towel by hand and the windows with a scrub pad and squeegee. After about 15 minutes, it was time to go back to the wheels. Once all the cement was removed, I washed the wheels as I normally would, then polished them because I was using that plastic razor blade and they looked brand new again. That looks nice. As a last step, I applied mud dressing to the tires and the non-textured black trim before Wildman Axle from Axle's Foreign Car Parts came in to help me get her started after all these years. If you remember, Axel's my buddy that bought the Audi GT a few months back and has quite a collection of cars himself. To safely start up the engine, we of course checked all the fluids, but I wanted to make sure the fuel distributor was receiving fuel from the fuel pump underneath the gas tank. So to test this, we disconnected the line from the distributor to see if fuel would come through. Sure enough, it did. So this is positive news. We reconnected the line and then started the car, but no go. So at this point, we then loosened the lines from the fuel distributor to the injectors and they spewed out a bit of old crud, but we could start to see that there was some life here, but we tried it again and no go. Oh, so close. For test number three and to isolate what the problem might be, Axel poured gasoline into the intake and she started right up. So we now know that the injectors might be the problem. So we decided to take one of the injectors out just to take a look at it and then decided after looking at it, they all need to come out. So I did that and then dropped them all off at Axles for repair. Okay. The next day I arrived at Axles to see how old morning, injectors sir. are Happy clean. Friday. Happy Friday to you. So what's the diagnosis of my injectors? Well, they were pretty dirty. Yeah. They're all nice and clean, internally anyway. Yeah. Externally, that's your job. <laughs> But uh, as you know, with detailing. Yes. Well, so show me what the deal is here. So this is the magic tool that cleans these old antique injectors. It's pretty. Uh, this thing is antique itself. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> Let's not make a mess. That's the dirt that came out of the old injectors. Wow. This is a, a bad injector from a different job. That's just gas? Just for this purpose, it's just gas. And see how this is squirting? Yeah. It's it's a, just a straight stream. It's supposed to be like a shower nozzle. Nice fine mist. So indicating that it's, it's something is boogering it up. Is all. Th this one is plugged and it's not repairable. Now we'll put one of the cleaned cleaned ones in there. So this is from my 450. Yes. See how that oh, sprays? Oh, no kidding. Yep. See the difference? and see how it holds yeah 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 it holds pressure and then you minute it, it gets to the to where it needs it hits just over four that's when it opens see how nice fine the mist is yes you hear a little squeaky there yeah yep all right brand new refurbished injectors yep if if i were you i'd clean these up a little bit externally it's not a big deal but how just like Brake cleaner? A little wire brush, brake cleaner, yeah. Got it. you the man. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. With the flushed out injectors in hand, I hurried back to the shop to clean up the outside with a wire brush, then reinstall them and reconnect the fuel lines, but making sure not to cross thread them in the process. To be extra sure I did everything correctly, I asked Axel to come over and double check my work before we gave it its first crank with the clean hey, injectors. There he is. What's going on, boss man? I am. It's like you're making progress, Larry. Yeah, I'm, everything I'm double checking is tight, but mm -hmm. I wanted the blessing of the master. Any problems peek? putting the injectors in, or did you no. got them in nicely and 
Nice and good. Uh, this one here was a little bit more of a challenge for some uh -huh. reason, just the just the, the bolt. But all of it went in. I, I did what you said, which was to not like uh, strip, strip them the going in or you know be aggressive. So let's fire it up, crank it, and see. Uh, see, see how it she goes. Like. Yeah, right. come on. It's exciting. Fingers crossed. Nice, huh? Yeah, man. Clean the injectors, put them back in. She started right up. Life is good. Now yeah, it's why much is lower. It well, number one, it's warm, and I, I turned down the idle a little bit. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds better. All right, that was awesome. The injectors were the problem. We fixed them. The car looks amazing. It runs great. I have to ask, are you interested in taking her home? Indeed. So what, what are you looking for? I would like, I think 11 to 12 is probably top end market for it. I'm asking 10 for as it sits right now. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Well, considering uh, the paint looks good. It's got some rust here and there. Interior's nice. I'm sure the tires expiration day and I'm- Oh yeah, they're way past. So it's gonna need new sneakers. Yep. And uh, we don't know about the brakes. I would no. consider eight. 8,000? I'm not even going to argue with you. 8,000 for all your help. You're a good man. And it's going to a new home. Good home. I'm very excited. And plus I get to see it because it's right down the street. So absolutely. <laughs> all right, man. This is awesome. <laughs> it's running. <laughs> Yellow. Well guys, there you have it. After two days, I flipped the Mercedes for $8,000, leaving me $3,000 in profit. I couldn't be happier. Plus, it's going to a great home. As you can see right there on next week's episode, I'm working on a 1994 Toyota Supra and it's right-hand drive. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. I'll see you guys next time.